This is a demonstration of how to calculate the theoretical energy content of a fuel. The question we're going to use in this example is calculate the energy released when one gram of ribose, C5H10O5, is combined with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water. There are quite a few steps in this process, so we'll work through them one at a time. First, let's take a look at the equation we're going to be using. Here is a ribose molecule. We are combining it with molecular oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water. I'm going to do this in four steps. First, we need to balance this equation so we know how many bonds are being broken and formed during this reaction. So we're going to balance the equation for one mole of ribose. We are then going to calculate the energy needed to break all of the bonds in the reactants and also the amount of energy released when the product bonds, the bonds in the carbon dioxide and water, are formed. Next, we're going to use the information we got from step two to calculate the change in enthalpy or delta H of this reaction, which is equal to the energy in the energy required to break the bonds in the reactants minus the energy out, the energy released when the products were formed. Once we have delta H, we, are going to, we will have the answer we want in the units of kilocals per mole, since we want the answer in kilocals per gram, because we want the answer for one gram of ribose, we then need to convert from moles, kilocals per mole, to kilocals per gram using the formula weight of ribose. So we'll have to calculate that as well. So with step one, we'll balance the equation. I'm not going to go through this uh, in this video. There is another video on how to balance chemical equations. You can take a look at if you need help doing this step. So quickly, one ribose combines with five oxygens to produce five CO2s and five waters. Now that we have this information, we can jump to step two, which is one of the meteor parts of this calculation, and this is calculating the energy in and the energy out. There is another video showing energy calculations if you want more help with this step. We'll do this in two steps. First, we'll calculate energy in, which is the bonds broken when the reactants are combined. The reactants in this re reaction is one molecule of ribose, or one mole of ribose, and five moles of molecular oxygen. The first step is to take an inventory of all the bonds. So we will list the type of bonds present and the number of each bond. Then we will look up on a table to find the kilocals per mole, which is down here on the right. And once we do that, we can sum them all. So first, the inventory. There are carbon-carbon single bonds, carbon-hydrogen single bonds, carbon-oxygen single bonds, oxygen-hydrogen single bonds. In ribose, there's one single carbon-oxygen double bond, and the molecular oxygen has oxygen-oxygen double bonds. If you go through, we've got four carbon-carbons. Looking at the table, the energy associated with those bonds is 83. 4 times 83 is 332. We have six carbon-hydrogen single bonds. The energy is 99 kilocals per mole per bond. 6 times 99 is 594. Four carbon-oxygen single bonds. 4 times 87 gives us 348. We have four oxygen-hydrogen single bonds. Each of those have 110 kilocals per mole of energy associated with them. So that gives us another 440. One carbon-oxygen single bond. Five oxygen-oxygen double bonds. We multiply those. We then take these values and sum them. 332 plus 594 plus 348, plus 440, plus 191, plus 580, equals 2,485 kilocals per mole. So this is our energy in, or the energy required to break all of the bonds in the reactants. 
We'll write this over here because we're going to need this to calculate delta, delta H or change in enthalpy. Next step is to calculate energy out. So we'll go through the same process, but this time we'll be looking at the bonds in the products. And the products in this reaction are 5 moles of carbon dioxide and 5 moles of water. Take the bond inventory. There are carbon-oxygen double bonds and hydrogen-oxygen single bonds. There's two bonds in each of these molecules, so there's a total of 10 of each of these. Five carbon dioxides, two bonds per carbon dioxide. Five waters, two bonds per water molecule, gives us a total of 10 each. Pull the table back in, 10 times 191 for the carbon oxygen double bonds, 10 times 110 for the hydrogen oxygen single bonds. Multiply these find the sum and we get 3,010. So now we know energy out is 3,010 kilocals per mole. Step three is to use energy in and energy out to calculate delta H. So it's energy in minus energy out and this will equal the change in enthalpy. Or another way to think about this is the change in energy or the energy flow as heat, the heat released from this reaction. So 248, 2,485 minus 3,010 gives us negative 525. So the answer is 525 kilocals per mole. That's the amount of energy released when one mole of ribose is combined with oxygen. But we want to know how much is released when one gram is burned, so we need to convert kilocals per mole to kilocals per gram. We will start by finding the molecular weight of ribose, C5H10O5. There is another video showing calculations of molecular weight if you'd like more help with this. Create a table, take an inventory of the elements in the molecule, list the number of atoms of each element in the molecule, and then go get the, get the atomic weight of each element off of a periodic table. So there are five carbons. The atomic weight of carbon is 12. Five times 12 is 60. 10 hydrogens, atomic weight of one. So a total of 10 for hydrogen. And five times 16 for oxygen gives us 80. So the formula weight of ribose is 150 grams per mole. Armed with this, we can now convert our kilocals per mole value to kilocals per gram by doing a simple conversion. Negative 525 kilocals per mole times one mole per 150 grams. The moles are going to cancel and we'll get the final answer of three, negative 3.5 kilocals per gram as the energy released when one gram of ribose is burned.